Let's uh, focus on UK politics now, where the Prime Minister, believe it or not, has suffered a 45-point drop in approval rating since July. And that's according to a shock new poll, not from the likes of the Daily Telegraph or any right-wing publication, but from the left-leaning Observer newspaper. And that puts him below Rishi Sunak. And, of course, this all comes as the government is embroiled in the freebie scandal. And the Labour Party is due to start their conference, though, in today in Liverpool. What are they going to say? Elsewhere in politics, leadership hopeful and former Immigration Minister Robert Jenrick has revealed dozens of terror suspects have crossed the English Channel in small boats. And he claims that individuals we know are linked to Islamic State and Al-Qaeda have simply waltzed right into Britain. OK, GB News political correspondent Olivia Utley joins us now from the Labour Party conference in Liverpool. Good morning, Olivia. This uh, popularity poll for Sir Keir Starmer, devastating, and I guess coming at the worst possible time as the Labour conference kicks off today in Liverpool. Well, absolutely. I mean, we're pretty used to seeing devastating popularity polls for prime ministers in recent years. Boris Johnson, Liz Truss and Rishi Sunak all saw their fair share of them. What is very, very different about this one, of course, is that Keir Starmer won an enormous majority in the House of Commons just three months ago, just four seats short of what Tony Blair achieved in 1997. And to put this popularity rating into perspective, Keir Starmer is on minus 26. Rishi Sunak is on minus 25, so the leader of the opposition is more popular than the Prime Minister who was elected just three months ago. When Tony Blair won that general election in 1997 with a similar sized majority to Keir Starmer, his popularity rating was well into the positive figures. And Boris Johnson, who was always a bit of a Marmite figure, even in his heyday, even when he was at his most popular, he was on about zero three months after that 2019 general election victory, which of course wasn't nearly as big in scale as the victory that Keir Starmer has just achieved. So this is not good news for the Prime Minister. And as you say, it comes at the worst possible time, just as Labour head into party conference. It feels as though the Labour Party has been embroiled in scandal after scandal over the last few weeks. There is, of course, freebie gate, uh, which we've all been talking about for days now. And it looks like we're going to carry on talking about it, because although Keir Starmer has now made uh, a big U-turn, he has said that he won't be receiving any more free clothes day after day there's another story about things that he has received from donors over the last uh, few years. So that story doesn't seem to be going away. At the same time, you have this story about Sue Gray and the amount she's paid, £170,000. That's £3,000 a year more than the Prime Minister. Now, that raises a couple of issues. One of them, of course, is if Sue Gray is earning more than the Prime Minister, then who exactly is running the country? That's what a lot of people in Whitehall are asking at the moment. The other issue, and perhaps this is more important for Keir Starmer, is that there are lots and lots of special advisers who are really peeved that uh, Sue Gray is earning so much. Some of them are now earning less than they were earning when they were in opposition. And if you've got that really bad mood around the Prime Minister, even if it doesn't feed out too much wider into the country, then that is not good news for such a newly elected Prime Minister. I mean, clearly there are people within number 10 leaking these stories, um, and he has uh, vowed that he is going to find out and get rid of the leaks. But surely he should be looking at the reason why, just a few weeks into his new government, there seems to be such discontent amongst his own staffers, some of those spads that you mentioned, such... Um, real worries, concerns about Sue Gray, or well, some of them plainly hate her, don't they? Is she becoming a liability to him? Well, I think that's a really interesting question. It does feel a little bit as though the Dominic Cummings years are repeating themselves. We saw exactly the same thing when Boris Johnson was Prime Minister. Special advisers from all over the government, really fed up with the amount of power that Dominic Cummings had, called him sort of power-hungry, said that he was pulling all of the strings and that Boris Johnson was essentially the puppet. This is beginning to look like something a bit similar. And as you say, Anne, it's all very well getting rid of the leakers in Number 10. But why are they leaking? The Labour Party won this enormous majority three months ago. Today at conference, there should be a celebratory air, but it really doesn't feel like that at all. If you speak to backbenchers and even some frontbenchers, some of those uh, ministers who've just been uh, given their job by Keir Starmer, they don't feel happy about the operation in Number 10. Lots of them saying that it's amateurish, and you can see why. This enormous furore over those freebies that Keir Starmer received, it felt like uh, the Prime Minister showed not, not very much sort of political 
political nous, something that Rishi Sunak was also accused of uh, in recent months. And I think that's a problem which is going to stick by the Prime Minister. It'll be fascinating to see how this conference develops. Will we get that sort of celebratory air or will there just be uh, murmurings behind, uh, behind the hands, uh, whispers that the Prime Minister isn't doing a good job as people were expecting? Mm, Olivia, the Telegraph reporting a couple of days ago that a senior Starmer ally inside number 10 told the Prime Minister to get an effing grip on the leakers because it was going to bring down his government. Uh, can we just very briefly talk about Robert Jenrick? He's warned, of course, that he's the Tory leadership frontrunner. He's warned that uh, Al-Qaeda and Islamic State terrorists are crossing the boats, uh, sorry, crossing the channel in small boats, um, are uh, indeed terrorists. I mean, not uh, surprising news to most of us, I guess. Well, it's sort of shocking news, but as you say, not exactly surprising. Why? Because the people who are coming here on small boats are, by the very definition, just totally, totally unregulated. Lots of them actually, if they have documentation on who they are, they throw it into the channel on their way over because they think it's more likely, and they're probably right, that they will be accepted as a refugee in this country if they have no proof at all of where they've come from or who they are. Some of them, of course, uh, claim to be younger than they are when they arrive in this country in order to get a, a child visa for living in the UK. So the idea that some of these people could possibly uh, be terrorists doesn't seem very far-fetched at all. Well, why is Robert Jenrick talking about it now? Quite simply because the Conservatives aren't in power anymore. Addressing the small boats issue is notoriously difficult. Unless you have some sort of strong deterrent programme, as the Rwanda programme was, it was supposed to work like that, of course it didn't work like that at all, then you do just have an endless flow of people wanting to come to the UK. And there's no real way of stopping it. That's what the Conservatives learnt when they were in office over the last 13 years. And it's what Keir Starmer and his government are learning the hard way now. But what you're seeing now is someone like Robert Jenrick, who just a few months ago was an immigration minister, now sort of sticking the knife into Keir Starmer and pointing out just what an enormous problem this is for the new government. Absolutely. They've got quite a few enormous problems on their plate, but they wanted the job. Thanks very much indeed, Olivia. It's going to be an interesting day, the first day at the Labour Party conference. Yeah, Olivia will be with us all throughout the day on GB News with the latest, including uh, Angela Rayner's speech at around, was it, 11.20? So that'll be interesting.